When you arrive at the station this morning, the hot air is、ah. stifling. You realize that the invention of the air conditioning hasn't reached the sweaty headquarters of Cleveland's finest. What is worse is that you have to push your way in past the reporters who are trying to get the juicy news on the latest beheading. After you make your way in, you're asked to wait a bit in front of Elliot Ness's office before he or someone else can take your deposition. You see Detective Obono arrive in what appears to be a set of old, smelly clothes that mismatch with the rest of the police. You're here to give your statement? Ah, I really hope you don't make me write it down. I've been in a cover interviewing people all night, but no one is talking. That is because you don't look like a vagrant, Obono. Says a blonde man who walks up to Elliot Ness's door, which he opens without knocking, and before he. Walks in. He says, "Your costume is so bad. I wonder if you've ever been near a vagrant or even a Kingsbury one." The door shuts closed behind that man, and you can hear Elliot Ness and a blonde man starting to argue from within the office. Obono looks delighted, and he says, "Oh boy, this is gonna be good. Judge Martin really knows how to make a scene." Judge Martin looks like this. Is that the、uh, judge that uh, the doctor、uh, Edward Sweeney was?、Uh... Yeah, that's his cousin. Cousin, yeah. Ah. Ah,、oh, yeah, he's also Sweeney. Okay. Do you do anything, or do you just wait?、Uh... Well, I will comment on all that the detective said、uh, with few words, and that is, well, we are willing to talk, but we are just here wait for somebody. I'm gonna whisper you. We're waiting for Ness.、Uh, yeah. Don't trust the other detective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ness, Ness will take your deposition. You hear <laughs> the voices from inside getting louder, and then you hear the judge saying, "You've had an inch of progress since you got here, Elliot. The press is going to keep terror for us until we catch this murderer." And Elliot Ness answers, "Martin, they can drag my name in the dirt all they want." Uh, unlike you, I don't have a grand career in politics I'm preparing for. I'm doing this for the people. Now stop berating me every time the murder pushes your promotion away further, and let me do my job. And Martin says, "I wish you would, but it's clear that you're not going to move this case along until you get people to trust in this department again. Come out there and do the damn press conference." No, I have more important things to do. And if you won't do it, I'll ask your bono to speak on behalf of the station. At this, Judge Martin Sweeney storms out of the office, shouting that Elliot has lost his mind and glaring at Obono, who has made himself very small behind his desk at the mention of having to do extra work in the form of a press conference. Elliot sees you out of the open door to his office, and he gestures for you to come in. He looks tired. He looks done. We are also pretty tired, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess he's like working hard, not on the last twelve hours for him. Yeah, last time I slept, it was like two thousand and one or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna enter when you gesture. Yeah, and we will close the door. Are you all inside? Yeah. Is he alone or is with the other detective? He has his own desk. Okay. He even has a shiny plaque with his name on on the door. Okay. Cool. Morning, Detective Ness. Uh, morning. You're you're here to make your deposition. Yeah. First of all, I'm I'm sorry about all the negative pressure that you have from the judge and the others, but I think we have something that could help you. He's rubbing his temples, and when you mention something that could help him, he raises his head. Yes. We use the dog to track the smell of、uh, the the body from the crime scene, and we manage to find a neighbor、uh, somewhere in city. But before I give you the information, I promise something to someone, and I know that you can help me,、uh, knowing your career and your your personality.、Um, and I, I need you to give you the promise that you will help this person truly. If I can help within the law, I'll help. That—that's exactly within the law. Yes. 
we talked to someone and we received few information, but this person is being stalked uh, by the local mafia. Uh, she 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 warned the police, but it didn't work. She told us that she don't trust the police anymore. But I told her that I know someone in the department that will be able to help her and that will truly care. And I know it's you. Oh, are they still talking about uh, Joseph? Exactly. Uh, I, I'm gonna see if I can do anything about it. But with the case going on right now, I it's difficult for me to take care of this too. It's listen, I I don't it it's a complicated matter. But uh, yeah, I'll 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 try to see if I can do something. Okay, <sighs> it it it. it. It lead us. Uh, I do believe you, and if you manage to do something that will like raise the public opinion of the Cleveland Police Department uh, by catching a local thugs that extort and shutting down this, could give back the trust to the department, and it will be maybe easy for the department to get more information. Anyway, you, you told me you would do something. Uh, I believe you. Now we we arrived on Harvard Street, uh, and we managed to be identify sort of the victim. That's a vagrant that was coming from outside the city and was pretty new, and that pretty much match the descriptions of the body we found. And we talked to Mrs. Andrea Wilsko that confirmed to us that she saw the person around and it was pretty much around this area. We had to use the dog of the journalist uh, Dolsa, but we convinced him to do not release the information into the press. Well, in fact, he will release it, but not the good one, so it won't interfere with the investigation. Hmm. Thank you very much. He gets up, he takes a pen and he puts it on Harvard Street because he has this huge map of uh, Kingsbury Run. And you can see there are a lot of pens of different colors. And basically he's put a blue pen on there and he thanks you for your help. Uh, maybe one of my colleagues will have something to add that I forgot. Can you elaborate the map first? <laughs> I will ask him politely. This seems like a pretty thoughtful process. Or... The red pins are where the bodies were found. Were found, okay. The blue pins are where we have leads. And you can see there are like three blue pins on the map. And then there's also a series of yellow pins, but he doesn't explain what. Can we convince him to explain it to us? You'll have to convince him that you're trustworthy. Uh, with a persuasion check at minus six. Gonna try. Yay! There are 30 yellow pins, and he tells you that these are the leads that they have followed and that have been inconclusive or that have already like been searched all the way by the investigation to the point where there hasn't been anything else. And he also explains that it's where they have had testimonies from vagrants or people from the city given to them. Are all those pins in uh, Kingsbury Run area all over the town? They're all over the town. We had a theory, uh, Detective Ness, that maybe by studying the pattern where we found the body, we could eventually find out around where it would drop the next body. Maybe it's going somewhere, maybe there's a, a logic. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you, did you did you study this possibility? Yeah, most of the bodies have been dropped around uh, Broadway Avenue specifically. So we're trying to watch around that, but we think that the murderer is not heading anywhere with the bodies, but rather that he is getting more and more bold. He doesn't care about being caught as much as he used to, and now he's dropping the bodies deeper and deeper into town because he can get away with it. He's taunting us. Since you are sharing all the information with us, we are also here to maybe offer you some help. Well, you know, I'm a chemistry professor and maybe there is a slight chance we might caught the murderer by uh, analyzing the traces of soil where the 
victims were found. Uh, but unfortunately, I will need some equipment for that. And I was hoping maybe your uh, laboratory or some forensic equipment that you have might come useful in that case. You see, maybe we can find if all the victims share the same trace of soil chemistry. So we might deduce that they were at the same place at some time or some kind of common uh, link between them. I, I have never heard of that. That, if you can do that, yes. That, 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 do you need the shoes of the victims? Yeah, I will need the shoes and I will need some kind of uh, chemical lab, not, not not anything fancy, just something I can boil things up or uh, split the uh, molecule. Uh, probably there is some kind of medical or uh, forensic. Uh... All right. Um, I, I am going to need to see a paper t- to, to check that you are a professor to, to make sure. Well, it's time to say the truth. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you're actually going to do it? You're going to say it? No, I, I will just say, believe me, I am professor of chemistry. <laughs> I will say, but she was a seeker of truths. She found and collected in many forms. One of those truths is that I am a professor of chemistry. I'm going to look at you with a, like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so, Elliotness, like, he... He blinks a bit, he, he looks at you and uh, he says, yeah, uh, all right, all right, I'll, I'll uh, go and ask someone to get you the shoes. And he leaves you in his office all by yourselves. What the hell did you do? I was just telling the truth. You see, the truth has many powers if it's told correctly. Uh-huh. Now speak the truth and everybody will trust you. <laughs> You have to spend uh, one light karma I to did. activate this karma. I did. I did used from the karma, yeah. Well, at least we're gonna have the shoes to analyze them. We need to buy or find the camera. I will so take a picture of this man. Is the door open right now? It's closed. All right. Listening for him coming back, I'm going to take a quick look on the papers on top of his desk, not moving anything. Okay. On his desk, you see a series of newspaper, and you see that he has uh, circled a couple of things, different leads. He has uh, circled, for example, the fact that a news reporter seems to have caught on that it's probably someone who, with a medical background who's the murderer, and, and things like that. Are you listening for him to come back? Yes. Then make a vigilance check. Do I, do I notice not. what he's doing? If you want to try to hide what you're doing, Oliver, you can roll for stealth while Jonathan is rolling for vigilance. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So I can, I can roll for stealth? You can roll for stealth to avoid having Eric notice this. Or Good luck uh, avoiding me. <laughs> will, will that also help avoid... Um, Elliot, notice this as well? If you succeed your perception check, then you will know when he's back and you won't need to make a stealth check to have him avoid it. I am definitely going to need that stealth check because I have to get a 12 to pass the vigilant one. Okay. So stealth and hope he doesn't notice, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. (laughs) So I noticed that he's doing that? Yes, you notice. Yeah, I'm gonna say, okay. he, he's sharing information with us. Don't do that. If he called you, you're gonna blow the link we have, actually. This isn't like searching around inside the desk. This is literally like standing on the desk. Yeah. Walk over everything and then leave. Yeah, he's not touching anything, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think, I think I'm going to get caught doing this. You got caught by Eric? But I'm going to give you a piece of information. There is a glass full of a liquid that smells like it has alcohol in it. It has been placed uh, next to the desk, on the floor next to the desk, 
and it has spilled a couple of drops and the drops are still wet, which means it's happened recently and it's been done rather hastily. Basically, you notice that Elliot has been drinking alcohol. Well, it's all legal back then. It's a prohibition time, huh? No, actually, in, we're in 1938. The prohibition ended five years ago. Yeah, five years, yeah. So he's just enjoying himself, yeah. And he probably didn't sleep, so he needs some kind of booster. <laughs> but but you, you also know that Ed was very famous for breaking down the illegal alcohol rings that Al Capone had in Chicago. Yeah. That's what he's yeah. famous for. Yeah. Hmm, do I notice this too? You notice because Oliver just stands behind the desk and is looking at it like and lights of it. And Ness comes back. No, none of you has heard of him uh, arrive. And he sees you like looking behind his desk. And there's, there's a pause and he says, please, please step away from my desk. Here are the shoes. Please, doctor, take care of your things. Uh, that will be all for today. I've got to get back to you. Do we look like uh, physically that he drinks alcohol? You can make a search check to notice that. <laughs> the dice are on our side today. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's my field. In fact, uh, if there's no modifiers, I succeed without rolling, in fact. Uh, except if you roll a one. A one is always a failure. So Elliot's breath smells like alcohol and his eyes are a bit red. So you do notice that he's the one who's been drinking. This. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. You leave his office with... Uh, he gave you samples of the dirt from the shoes of every victim whose shoes they still have. That's uh, five victims, because the rest of the shoes have been like given back. And you're in the very warm police station again. Well, guys, you can now go to library. We should all, all also find a map of a town that shouldn't be a problem, so we can pin our pins on it and i will probably go and spend half of a day making uh, research in their forensic lab about the shoes and soil samples to see if i can find the same soil on each one of those or something like that mm -hmm. smart uh, that research is going to take you two days because you have to go and take samples of mud from all over the town to do that First thing I want to do is sample all of those shoes and see if they have a match soil trace. So just shoes. I probably search for uh, some uh, chemical compound that okay. can match on each shoes. And then I will try to go and collect the samples. All right. So that is going to take you a day. Roll for sites. No modifiers. 17. I pick 17. Oh, your balance? Okay, cool. You find that there is mud that matches, so that you'll, you'll be able to pinpoint the parts in town that all of the victims have been in. Okay, now I need to go and collect samples and see what, what sample is actually yeah. that one. So that took you an entire day to do that. I assume you bought, you got the, the, the equipment that you needed with the money. You I will do that thing if police station has their forensic there. I don't want... I have nothing to hide. I, okay. If uh, they will lend me a desk. The, the police station's doctor is going to give you access to all of the uh, equipment. It's this person. And you, like, you, you meet him, you know his name. While we are doing this research, uh, can I ask this Dr. Joseph Connolly if he knows uh, about the forensic that got hurt in the hunt, so he... It's him. He's... Ah, his it's leg him. Is, his leg is like in a cast. Okay, okay. Can I talk to him about that accident and see if he's bluffing, maybe? Yeah, go ahead. You can roll empathy. Oh man, it's a zero. Nope. You, you don't know, but he does tell you a long-winded story about, you know, the hunting accident that he got into. Uh, where he fell down a ravine and like broke his leg. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the meantime, the other players, what is everybody doing 
during this day. I guess the library work. Oliver is not not terrible at research, so okay. Myself, I'm I'm feeling more that going on the field. I don't know how helpful I'll be with research, but I can try and at least like help gather things. Okay. Yeah, I I, I can search decently enough, find basic things that then y'all can look deeper into. All right. Who researches what? Uh, what did we say we have to research? Figure out where all the bodies were found. We have that information it. with the map. Do we just remember all of that? You can make an intellect check at a difficulty of minus three, and if any of you succeeds, you have all of the information. Five, no six, need to roll, max succeed. Yeah. Really succeed. <laughs> okay, I, I got a 12. Oh, map, yeah. Ooh. Let's see. This map is an official map from the official uh, murders, so it might have more victims on it than there has been at this point in time. So, it, makes sense. It, it was nine murders on the one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Exactly nine. Ah, no, there is ten. No, there is a number ten that's right there. That's yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I'm, I'm counting on all of you not to take into <laughs> consideration where the ninth murder happened. Okay. Um, where the no, murder happened. I'm what, feeling what going on Detroit now? Avenue now. <laughs> and this is where your characters spawn. Also, like, I did change a couple of things. Right now we're in December, and uh, it says that the body was found in July. It's like, that has also changed. I, I, I changed some of the names uh, involved in the case because I don't want, like, to cause any problems with, you know, like, uh, if people still, if the family of the victims or other people are still around, stuff like this, so I just kept the names of the most famous ones. Well, in fact, uh, on the day myself, I'm gonna go at each point there was on the map and gonna try to find new witness or new informations in that way. So I'm pretty much gonna follow Mr. Lewowski uh, and, and while he's taking his sample, I'm gonna do interrogation, but quickly I'm going to be far behind him. <laughs> Okay. Uh, how much do you have in network? Eight. Okay. Do you have any domains that would help you right now with this? Police crimes. <laughs> so you're asking more on the crime and police side of things. So you're you're asking around a lot. Uh, it's taking you a certain amount of time and. You gather information about the case, and you confirm things that the police have told you. For example, you, you know that the police isn't that good at doing their job <laughs> during this time period. So you're confirming things, and, and you're sure about like the places where the bodies were found and, and things like this. And when you come to the hotel this night, after the, the, a long day of asking people, it hasn't been very fruitful, but when you look for your pockets, you realize that someone has slipped you a note and that it reads this. No police with your S? And that one I'm gonna sneak out before the sunset, so I'm gonna go there alone. Probably not a good idea, but... Oh, you're going there alone? <laughs> I'm not going to go meet the source with like Four people. Okay. I can be quiet. <laughs> I, I'm not talking to this note. Uh, it's it's part of the detective work on that side of my character. He's not gonna bring a whole crew. It's gonna scare the witness. So yeah, I'm gonna go along. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so before we play that scene out, I want to ask what Philip and Oliver are doing. Oliver has been pinning getting stuff to the map, and I guess trying to do some analysis on where the murders have happened, uh, plus trying to find anything else in the library that could be useful to the case. So the way research works in this game is that either you research on a theme, or you ask a question and, uh, and you make a roll, and if you succeed, 
then you get the information or you get like some information. Can I just try to collect like all the information I can find in the library? Yes, absolutely. All right, I'll do Good. that. Okay, just make a documentation check. Flat, no difficulty? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, 12, you do research. You acquire the information on the dates of the murders, the, the place of the murders, details, and things like this. That includes all the known heads and, and stuff? Yeah. There's one John Doe and one Jane Doe head have been recovered, and then and there's a third head of the first victim that has been identified as Edward and Rask. Uh, and where are they? Buried at this point. No, Sorry, where were they found? Oh, okay. Uh, the first victim, Edward and Rassi, his head was recovered near his body uh, at the bottom of Jackass Hill, uh, which is a part of Kingsbury Run near East uh, 49th and Praha Avenue. Yeah, right here. Okay. The other head was between like Woodland Avenue and E105, right here. And the last head of Jane Doe. Uh, Jane Doe is the only black victim. The head was found uh, down river near the entrance to the larger, uh, to the lake. Okay. Now, what does Philip and Saros do all day? Is there any information that we still need to find or did we get everything we were looking for? We can say you helped uh, Oliver. Yeah, yeah. Because that definitely is like one of my original plans. Just like anywhere I could help, I would. Okay. Hi everyone, and thank you for watching this video. If you want to be a part of this story, we are currently looking for more players and game masters to play new games in this setting and on this channel. You can also be a part of the story by having your face added to the cast of characters. I draw all of the images for this game, and you can commission me to make you into an NPC. If you like the style and you want a drawing like that of yourself, or if you want to contribute to the project, you can contact me through the links in the description. Finally, if you want to keep up with all of the adventures on this channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so you can get a notification each time we upload the next episode of this story. And it would be very nice of you to like and share the video to help this channel grow. Have a nice day everyone.